This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone. Today I'm continuing with my Murders at Karlov Manor set review. So far I've looked at all the non-green cards in the set, and today we're going to look at the green ones. For each of these cards I'll discuss how I think they'll perform in limited, that means draft and sealed, and I'll punctuate each evaluation with a letter grade. If you're new to my set reviews and unsure of what my letter grades mean, you can find a guide in the description for this video. There are a few important things to keep in mind as I review these cards. First, because we're only talking about draft and sealed, I'm only going to be talking about cards that can be found in play boosters. Furthermore, I'm only looking at cards from the main set in this video. Play boosters now also contain cards from the list and special guests. Combined, that's about 50 cards that are basically a bonus sheet, and I'll be addressing those cards in their own video after we get through the main set, which will be the video after this one. Second, these are my evaluations of these cards before actually playing with them, since the goal is to have my set review done in time for the pre-release, and that of course means I'll be wrong about some things. However, as the format comes into focus, I'll be doing videos where I discuss how things have panned out. Lastly, I want to let you know that there are some set review related perks for being a channel member or a patron. You get access to my ongoing set notes during preview season, and you'll also get a spreadsheet with all of my grades once the set review is complete. If those perks interest you, check out the description where you can find out how to support the channel using one of those methods. Alright, without further ado, let's dive in with a look at the green cards and murders at Karlov Manor. First up, it's A Killer Among Us, which for four generic and a green is an uncommon enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 white human creature token, a 1-1 blue merfolk creature token, and a 1-1 red goblin creature token. Then, secretly choose human, merfolk, or goblin. Sacrifice a killer among us. Reveal the chosen creature type. If target attacking creature token is the chosen type, put three plus and plus one counters on it, and it gains death touch until end of turn. This is a neat design. Five mana for three one ones isn't great, but when all is said and done, you end up with two one ones in a 4-4 with death touch. The turn after you play this, you can really give your opponent a headache when you attack with all three, because they kind of have to figure out which one you might buff. In the end, I think this is a C+. It feels like you get five mana worth of value out of it, and the fail case of the card is still that you get three bodies, and it's pretty hard to like lose the game right after you cast a card like that. Next up, it's Aftermath Analyst, which for one generic and a green is a 1-3 Elf Detective at Uncommon. When it enters the battlefield, you mill three cards, and you can pay three generic and a green and sacrifice it to return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. This is a nice early game enabler for Collect Evidence decks that I would be interested in playing already if it just had the Enter the Battlefield ability. Collect Evidence, as we'll see later in this video, is a graveyard mechanic. So the fact it can also snag you some lands out of your graveyard is nice too, especially because lands don't help you collect evidence anyway. I'm giving this a C+. Next up, it's Airtight Alibi, which for two generic and a green is a common enchantment aura with flash and enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, you untap the enchanted creature. It gains hexproof until end of turn. If it's suspected, it's no longer suspected. An enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't become suspected. When you use this correctly, it can be an absolute beating. It can work as a decent trick that leaves the buff behind, and it can blank removal. Turning off suspect will usually be more upside than downside too, especially doing it at instant speed. Still, it is tricky to leave up this much mana. I think it's just a C. Next up, it's Analyze the Pollen, which for one green mana is a rare sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may collect evidence eight. Exile cards with total mana value eight or greater from your graveyard. Search your library for a basic land card. If evidence was collected, instead, search your library for a creature or land card. Reveal that card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. So this is basically Traverse the Ulvenwald with a different graveyard mechanic, and that kind of card's never as good in limited as it is in constructed because you're just not going to have a well-stocked graveyard quickly enough or early enough or powerful enough things to tutor up for this card to be amazing, but it still provides decent fixing early, and in the late game, it can tutor up your best creature. It's a C. Next up, it's Archdruid's Charm, which for three green mana is a rare instant. It says choose one. Search your library for a creature or land card and reveal it. Put it onto the battlefield tabbed if it's a land card. Otherwise, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Put a plus and plus one counter on target creature you control. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control, or exile target artifact or enchantment. Obviously, this is a really strong modal spell, if you can cast it. The plus and plus one counter and 
punch mode is the one most likely to be the most useful and most efficient. You can even use it as a trick of sorts and also remove something else. Sometimes you can get a two for one with that kind of effect. Tutoring things up is less good, although this can help you ramp, and there are enough artifacts and enchantments in the format for the third mode to matter. If this costs two generic and a green to cast, it would be a premium level removal spell with big upside, probably a B plus, but you can't really overlook that casting cost. Getting three mana of one color is hard and limited, and it isn't even guaranteed by like turn six. If your deck has 12 green sources in it, casting this becomes easier, but the upside also isn't so great that it's worth distorting your deck that way for the charm alone. Because it's tough to cast, I think it's a C+. Next up, it's Audience with Trostani, which for two generic and a green is a rare sorcery. Create a 0-1 green plant creature token, then draw cards equal to the number of different named creature tokens you control. So this has a baseline of being a 0-1 that draws you a card. That's not good, but as a fail case, it could be worse. This set does have a bunch of different creature tokens. We saw a killer among us, which is kind of a funny combo with this, but it still feels like drawing two with this is not that great and expecting more than that is an unreasonable expectation. You'll be able to set it up sometimes, sure, but not consistently and not often enough. I think more often than not, this is just gonna be the baseline and I think that just makes it a D. Next up, it's Axe Bane Ferox, which for two generic and two green is a 4-4 beast at rare with death touch and haste, and it has ward collect evidence for. This is nothing fancy. It's a super efficient creature that your opponent won't always be able to target with stuff, especially in the early game. I'm giving it a B. Next up, it's Bite Down on Crime, which for three generic and a green is a common sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may collect evidence six. This spell costs two less to cast if evidence was collected. Target creature you control gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If you aren't collecting evidence, this is very clunky, and clunky is dangerous on a removal spell like this, since your opponent interacting can two for one you. Still, if you choose your spot carefully, this is likely to kill most opposing stuff, and the stats boost might also really improve your attacks. Combine that with the evidence upside, and I think this manages to be a premium removal spell, I'm giving it a B minus. Next up, it's Case of the Locked Hothouse, which for three generic and a green is a rare enchantment case. It lets you play an additional land on each of your turns, and because it's a case, you can solve it. That means if you meet a requirement, it gets solved at your instep. The requirement here is that you control seven or more lands, and then once it's solved, you may look at the top card of your library anytime, and you may play lands and cast creature and enchantment spells from the top of your library. Solving this is inevitable in most Magic games, and once you do, it's really powerful. It even lets you get more than one card per turn. But here's the problem. This is an awful enchantment that doesn't add to the board up until that point, and that's a pretty big liability for a four mana card. Extra land drops are very hard to take advantage of and limited, especially by the turn you play this, because you just run out of lands to play. Basically, this is great in the late game and awful for the rest of the game, and that makes it really hard for it to get a great grade. I'm giving it a C. Next up, it's Case of the Trampled Garden, which for two generic and a green is an uncommon enchantment case. When it enters a battlefield, you distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures you control. You solve this one by having creatures with total power eight or greater. And when it's solved, whenever you attack, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature. It gains trample until end of turn. What this gives you up front is fairly acceptable. It does impact the board most of the time and green decks will be capable of solving this. And obviously it kind of helps you solve it by adding two more power to the board. Once you do, buffing an attacking creature every turn and giving it trample does feel pretty good. Still, it doesn't do a ton up front. I'm giving it a C plus. Next up, it's Chalk Outline, which for three generic and a green is an uncommon enchantment. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token, then investigate. So the idea here is to play cards with collect evidence alongside this, and if you have enough of that going on and enough creatures in your deck, this has the potential to be a fairly absurd engine since it effectively gives you two cards of value every time you collect evidence. The problem is that this does nothing up front, but the upside is insane. It feels like they really pushed this to try to make the collect evidence decks work because sometimes they give us these payoffs and they still don't add to the board in any way, shape or form. But this one does. Once you start collecting evidence, you get these bodies and these bodies are going to be able to make the game go long, which is likely to benefit you more than your opponent since you're a collect evidence deck. Meanwhile, you can also draw cards with investigate. So it feels like this has the potential to do enough in the right kind of deck. 
but it's probably still a build around. Like you really need to get there on graveyard stuff and have a high creature count or this is just a dud. So I think you have to give it a build around grade where it's gonna be like an F in a lot of green decks, but it has a ceiling around a B minus. I kind of hope the ceiling's even higher than that, but that's where I'm starting it. Next up, it's Culvert Ambusher, which for three generic and two green is a four or five worm horror at uncommon. When it enters the battlefield or it's turned face up, target creature blocks this turn if able, and it has disguise for four generic and a green. You can cast this face down for three generic as a two, two creature with ward two, turn it face up anytime for its disguise cost. So this kind of effect isn't always worthwhile. There just aren't always situations where it does something. When it does matter, it feels a bit like situational removal, and it's stapled to a creature with okay-ish stats, not to mention disguise, so I think it's a C. Next up, it's Fanatical Strength, which for one generic and a green is a common instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. This looks like a really good trick. We've seen Run Amuck in the past, and it has a strictly worse text box because it can only target attacking creatures, and Run Amuck was an absolute beating in aggro decks. I think this will be too. The stats boost plus trample can wreck combat in so many ways and make damage lethal out of nowhere. The boost is enough to save a creature from a lot of removal spells in a pinch too. You're going to want to keep this card in the back of your mind anytime you're playing someone who is in green and any green deck that's looking to just curve out and go after the opponent is going to want two or three of these, giving this a C+. Next up, it's Flourishing Bloomkin, which for one generic and a green is a 0-0 plant elemental at Uncommon. It gets plus one plus one for each forest you control. You disguise for four generic and a green, and when it's turned face up, search your library for up to two forest cards and reveal them. Put one of them into the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, then shuffle. So this is obviously at its best in a mono green or heavy green deck. You probably need like 12 forests to feel like you're going to do great with this. That said, the fact it has this disguise option does mean it isn't unplayable in other green decks, especially because its ability to search up forests probably means that it will still be a respectable size. It can grab you this format's dual lands too, which will come up. I'm giving this a B minus. Next up, it's Get a Leg Up, which for one green mana is an uncommon instant. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus one plus one for each creature you control and gains reach. We've seen this card before with Outreach, and it tends to be a really good trick. Once you're only paying one mana, Getting plus two plus two is okay, and this has the upside where it gives a way larger boost than that, and the fail case is still plus one plus one, which isn't the worst thing ever. It is awkward that they put reach on this since tricks are about a million times better when they're attacking, so that reach upside isn't super meaningful, but it's on a card that I'm already gonna want one or two of in a lot of green decks anyway. I'm giving it a C plus. Next up, it's Glint Weaver, which for five generic and two green is a 3-3 spider at Uncommon. It has reach, and when it enters the battlefield, you distribute three plus and plus one counters among one, two, or three target creatures. Then you gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. So this is this format's big old green creature that gains you life, which can help you stabilize from behind. If the Weaver's alone, it's a seven mana 6-6 with reach that gains you six life. That's not amazing, but it's okay. And because you can distribute the counters in any number of ways, it's often gonna be better than that. This is because you'll be able to put it on creatures who can already attack and or gain even more life than six. Still, this is a seven drop, something that gives me a little pause in today's limited formats. I do think it's the right kind of seven drop because it gives you value on board no matter what and gains you life, but it's hard to go above a C plus here. Next up, it's Green Belt Radical, which for three generic and a green is a 4-4 Centaur Citizen at Uncommon. It has Disguise for five generic and two green, and when it's turned face up, you put a plus and plus one counter on each creature you control. Creatures you control gain Trample until end of turn. Four mana for a 4-4 is still a pretty good stat line, and then this has huge Disguise upside. Sure, you can't access it until the late game, but having instant speed overrun in the late game is an absolute beating. But because the card has a solid fail case and insane upside, I think it's good enough to be a B. Next up, it's Hard Hitting Question, which for one green mana is an uncommon sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. They've really been pushing these punch effects lately. There once was a time where one mana for a straight up fight effect was a nice limited card, but now we get a one-sided fight for the same cost. Obviously, that's really good. You do need to have a sizable enough creature to make it do its thing, and you have to pick your spots because removal can be a blowout, but we're still talking about a one mana removal spell. This will feel like a green swords to plowshares pretty often, giving it a B. Next up, it's Hedge Whisperer, which for one green mana is an uncommon elf druid detective. It's a zero three. You can choose not to untap it during your untap step. 
and you can pay three generic and a green and tap it and collect evidence four and target land you control becomes a five five green plant boar creature with haste for as long as hedge whisperer remains tapped it's still a land activate only as a sorcery this ability is pretty powerful once you get there but in the meantime you've got a one mana zero three something that just isn't relevant on most boards it's also a little annoying that the ability is as expensive as it is and you can still only have one animated land at a time you had to jump through some very real hoops and play an otherwise subpar creature, but the effect is powerful. I'm giving this a C+. Next up, it's Hide in Plain Sight, which for three generic and a green is a rare sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library, cloak two of them, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. To cloak a card, put it onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature with ward two. Turn it face up at any time for its mana cost if it's a creature card. Four mana for two two twos is a pretty nice deal, and in this case, it's likely you grabbed a couple of cards that won't be 2-2s two for long. I'm giving this a B+. Next up, it's Loxodon Eavesdropper, which for 3 generic and a green is a 3-3 elephant detective at common. When it enters the battlefield, you investigate. And whenever you draw your second card each turn, it gets plus and plus one and gains vigilance until end of turn. A 4-mana 3-3 three, three that makes a clue isn't terrible, and this will be rumbling as a 4-4 vigilance anytime you crack a clue, so seems fine to me giving it a C. Next up, it's Nervous Gardener, which for one generic and a green is a 2-2 Dryad at common. It has Disguise for one green, and when it's turned face up, you search your library for a land card with a basic land type, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. A 2-mana two 2-2 two isn't what it used to be, but that's the fail case here, and this has the upside of fixing your mana. Note, by the way, this is another way that you can grab this format's dual lands, because it says a land card with a basic land type, rather than a basic land. I'm giving this a C+. Next up, it's Pick Your Poison, which for one green mana is a common sorcery. It says choose one. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact. Each opponent sacrifices an enchantment. Or each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. They price this to move, but I still think it's mostly a sideboard card. There will be enough times where none of the main modes are meaningful. A format with a bunch of artifact tokens in it makes the sacrifice and artifact part particularly underwhelming. I think this is probably just a C out of your sideboard. Next up, it's Pompous Gadabout, which for two generic and a green is a 4-2 human citizen at an uncommon. It has hexproof as long as it's your turn, and it can't be blocked by creatures that don't have a name. So the joke here is that disguised creatures can't block it, and that's definitely upside. Hexproof during your turn doesn't hurt either. Being able to play tricks and stuff on this and not having to worry about getting blown out sounds pretty nice. Still, it's got kind of a medium stat line and a couple of medium abilities, so I think it's probably just a C. Next up, it's Rope, which for one green mana is an uncommon clue equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus two, has reach, and can't be blocked by more than one creature. You can pay two generic and sacrifice the rope to draw a card, and it equips for three. This is probably the worst card in this cycle. The buffs it offers aren't amazing, especially when you have to pay three to equip. Like the others, you can still throw it away and replace it, so there's nothing wrong with this card. It's not bad. It's not a card that you should always cut but I don't think it always makes the cut either. I'm giving it a C minus. Next up, it's Rubble Belt Maverick, which for one green mana is a 1-1 human detective at common. When it enters a battlefield, you surveil two, and when it's in your graveyard, you can pay one green and exile it from your graveyard to put a plus and plus one counter on a creature, activate only as a sorcery. This feels like one of those common one drops that they give us that does a whole bunch of little things, and then it's really impressive and limited. A 1 mana 1 1 to Surveil 2 is probably playable to begin with in a color that has lots of collect evidence. Add to that the ability to put a counter on something if it gets milled or, you know, if it trades or goes to the graveyard in any way, you still get value out of it once it's there. And it just feels like this does a lot for 1 mana. I'm giving it a B minus. Next up, it's Sample Collector, which for two generic and a green is a 2-3 Troll Detective and Uncommon. When it attacks, you can collect evidence 3, and when you do, you put a plus and plus 1 counter on target creature you control. This can put the counter on itself, and attacking as a 3-4 on turn 4 doesn't seem impossible, but it's also not amazing. The ability to put the counter elsewhere does give you flexibility, but the base stat line here is mediocre, and that's kind of a problem for a creature that has to attack to do something more than be a vanilla creature, especially because you also need to set things up a little bit. I think it's just a C. Next up, it's Sharp-Eyed Rookie, which for one generic and a green is a 2-2 human detective at rare. It has Vigilance. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if its power is greater than Sharp-Eyed Rookie's power, or its toughness is greater than Sharp-Eyed Rookie's toughness, put a plus and plus one counter on it and investigate. This starts with passable stats and can grow throughout the game while drawing you cards. The only downside is that if you get it late, it's pretty mediocre. But the flip side is if you play this on turn two, you probably run away with the game. I'm giving this a B+.
Next up, it's Slime Against Humanity, which for two generic and a green is a common sorcery. Create a 0-0 green ooze creature token with Trample. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is two, plus the total number of cards you own in Exile and in your graveyard that are oozes or are named Slime Against Humanity. A deck can have any number of cards named Slime Against Humanity. That part doesn't matter in Limited because you already can have any number of cards named something in Limited. You just have to draft them. Anyway, this design is both fun and hilarious. It's a 3-mana 2-2 two, two slime. That's an F, and that means this card really needs a build-around grade, as most of these collect them all style cards do. I sort of feel like you're going to need to get to 3 before you reach the point where you can play this, and once you're at 4, we're probably talking about a C-plus level card. It's nice that it checks Exile and the Graveyard, as it would be a real bummer if this was a non-bow with collect evidence. So yeah, I mean, I think it's an F if you have 1, and if you get... Four, it's probably a C plus. Next up, it's the Pride of Hulklade, which for 10 generic and a green is a 215 legendary crocodile elk turtle at mythic rare. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total toughness of creatures you control. It has defender. You can pay two generic and two blue, and until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one plus zero, gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card equal to its toughness, and can attack as though it didn't have defender. Once this is on the board, it is a problem for your opponent, especially if you have the blue mana to use the ability. Notably, the card draw trigger isn't optional, so you don't really want to be using it on the pride of Hulkade itself. So the question is, how easy will this be to cast for a reasonable amount of mana? And I think the answer is that it's doable, but not really a walk in the park either. You're going to need a reasonably developed board for the pride to even cost something like six mana, Though obviously it gets better in a world where you have some creatures around that can draw you cards. Plus, if you have extra high toughness creatures in your deck, it might work out a little better. But I think this is challenging enough to make work that it's just a C+. Next up, it's They Went This Way, which for two generic and a green is a common sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, investigate. This ultimately gives you a two for one. I don't love that it's a sorcery that doesn't add to the board in any meaningful way. But it fixes your mana, and in games that go long enough, the clue is nice, but not doing anything to add to the board on turn three has been a liability in so many formats lately. I kind of hope this is a format where you can do stuff like this, but I'm going to err on the side of caution, giving it a C. Next up, it's Topiary Panther, which for four generic and two green is a 6-5 plant cat at common. It has trample and basic land cycling for one generic and a green, which means you can discard it, search your library for a basic land, and put it into your hand. A 6-mana six 6-5 six Trampler isn't that good, but tacking basic land cycling onto this makes it pretty nice. If you get it early, you can use it to fetch a land, and importantly, any basic land, so this can fix your mana. Then in the later game, you won't feel awful about casting it, and it also works really well with Collect Evidence. This is one of the ways where you can start paying for Collect Evidence 6 in the pretty early stage of the game. I'm giving it a C. Next up, it's Tunnel Tipster, which for one generic and a green is a 1-1 Mole Scout at common. At the beginning of your instep, if a face-down creature injured the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Tunnel Tipster, and it can tap for green. A 2-mana 1-1 that can tap for green is already a C-level card, and this has legitimate potential to grow throughout the game, which means it can stay more relevant than your typical mana dork. Of course, if you draw it late, it's not that impressive, but playing this on turn two and playing a couple of disguised creatures seems like a super common play pattern. This common looks pretty good, giving it a B minus. Next up, it's Undergrowth Recon, which for one generic and two green is a mythic rare enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. This was not printed with limited in mind. Even if your graveyard gets lots of lands in it, which is doable in the format, getting those lands back is of minimal value in the format because it isn't like you have insane utility lands and stuff like that. Even if you're getting back this format's Evolving Wilds every turn, you know, you're still not doing much, and it's not really worth playing this card. That's why it's an F. Next up, it's Vengeful Creeper, which for four generic and a green is a 5-5 five, five plant elemental at common. It has Disguise for five generic and a green, and when it's turned face up, you destroy an artifact or an enchantment in opponent controls. A 5-mana five 5-5 five, five is pretty beefy, and this one has some nice disenchant upside. I can see kind of wanting one of these in most of your green decks. I'm giving it a C+. And our last card is V2 Ghazi Inspector, which for one generic and a green is a 1-3 Elf Detective at common. When you cast it, you can collect Evidence 6. It has Reach. And when it enters the battlefield, if Evidence was collected, you put a plus and plus one counter on a creature, and you gain two life. So if this always put a counter on something and gained you two life as a two mana 1-3 with Reach, it would be a really good common, like at least a B. Collect Evidence 6 is a huge hurdle, though. 
you're certainly going to be able to do it during most games at some point in most games, but you're almost never going to be able to do it on turn two. So early in the game, this is basically just a two mana one three reach, which is not a card you really want to play. And then in the later stages of the game, it has a bigger impact and putting a counter on something and gaining life does tend to matter all game long, but it's not like it's a huge play either. So I think it's just a C. So those are all the green cards in Murders at Karlov Manor. Next, I'll take a look at the cards that are on the list, as well as the special guests. This is basically this format's bonus sheet. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to make sure you're caught up on the set review, you should see some playlists on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.